saved. Yes. Let's go ahead and look to the Lord in prayer. And Reverend Coker, will you pray, please? Abba, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name again. We thank you for each one that's here. Help Pastor Pope preach your word, God. And we thank you for that one that, that loves us and wants to be with us, Lord. And just keep your hand upon the rest of this service and this evening. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, God knows exactly what He's doing. Things don't happen by coincidence. That's right. We make the statement that we found God. Well, God wasn't lost. That's right. <laughs> and like those two little boys that we told you about that were in Sunday school, they were goofing around. They got called into the principal's office. And the principal asked one of them, Where's God? He just looked at the principal, and the principal asked him again, Where is God? He wanted to see if they were paying attention. About that time, the other boy took off and ran home. And after Sunday school, his friend went to his house, Say, why'd you take off and leave me there all by myself with the principal? He looked at him and he said, Well, somebody took God and they think we did it. <laughs> That's where God was. God's not lost. We were the ones that were lost. It's not there was some great search on our part to find Jesus. As we can read in so many different places in the Bible, Jesus made a way. And he is the one that came by our lives. He worked it out. He orchestrated circumstances to give us the opportunity to be saved, to hear the gospel, to accept his son Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we have this example that we're going to preach about here in just a little bit. This woman uh, at the well of, uh, in Samaria here, in the well of Sychar. I also think about the woman who had the issue of blood. We know that she came. We know there was a crowd that she reached out to touch Jesus. And we've heard that preached about many times. But you know what? Before she touched Jesus, Jesus had touched her. And we're not talking about a physical touch. But God, by the Holy Spirit, began to deal with that woman's heart. Someone told her about what the Lord had done and what he could do. And someone told her that he was passing by. And her heart was touched to seek God. To absolutely make her way to where she could get her blessing. But God is the one that touched her first. And you know what? We may have come and prayed. But Jesus is the one that touched you and I first. Amen. He touched Amen. our lives. He drew us unto himself by his word. By the witness of others. By the Holy Ghost. Thank God for that tonight. Amen. Because that was a needed encounter. Amen. Thank God, brothers and sisters, God works things out for you and I. You know, we've experienced this in our life. As a Christian, we've experienced this. Maybe you prayed for somebody. Maybe you felt the presence of God or you felt uh, an unction from God that you needed to talk to somebody. You needed to try to maybe reach out to them. It happened to me on Saturday. We got done knocking on doors. Just north of where we were, there's a park, a little lake, Silver Bell Lake, I can't think it's called. I said, well, let me go up here. Probably a lot of people around. It's a pretty day. And there was. There was probably 100 people Wonderful. or more around there. And I began to walk around and try to invite people, invited some people. And I saw this young lady standing by herself. And I was kind of apprehensive because my wife wasn't with me. There were a lot of people around. I said, well, I'm not going to approach a woman by myself. You know, I don't want to scare right. her right. or make her feel bad. But she just kept looking at the water. And I went, I talked to this young man. And talk to others, and, and uh, she was just looking into the water, and then she walked around other parts, she was just looking into the water. I said, what is going on with this girl? Is she, is she depressed? Is she thinking about jumping in the water or something? Oh, Lord. And I kept feeling that feeling that I needed to go, not only just hand her a card and invite her to church, which I did, but I needed to let her know that Jesus loved her. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. That God cared about her. Amen. And so, uh, I finally did that, and you know, I got my car's going to come home, and you, you feel that unction of God. I said, no, I need to do what God wants me to do. I drove back. I saw her. 
And so I walked over there. I said, ma'am, I'm not trying to be weird. I'm not trying to do anything wrong. I simply want to invite you to my church, and I want to let you know that God loves you. Okay? She took the card. I don't know what was going on in her mind. She said, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm a Christian. And I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe she was in a battle. Yeah. Maybe something was going on in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Don't need to know. That's right. God knew. Yeah. Amen. She needed some encouragement. Yeah. Thank God, brother, sister, when God does things like that, not only when he uses us to help reach out to other people, but thank God when God sends somebody by our life Amen. and reaches out to us with those needed encounters in our lives. You know, we all need encouragement, don't we? Amen. We all need a blessing. Maybe we need a brother to tell us, I'm praying for you. Okay, just was thinking about you. Just calling to tell you that I'm praying for you and that we love you or we appreciate you. Thank God for those times when God allows that to happen in our lives. Brother and sister, we have this example of this woman in the Bible, but she's not the only example. We've already told you about the woman that was with the issue of blood. We can think about maybe Moses at the burning bush. That wasn't just some coincidence. Right. He was just out there uh, goofing around, and all of a sudden he saw some bush on fire. It just happened to be God there. No, brother and sister, that was all planned by God. God laid all that out, set all that up, because God was going to use him Brother and sister, to help deliver God's people. Maybe we can think about Paul on the road to Damascus. Again, not some circumstance that just happened, brother and sister. God orchestrated all of that. God is the one that began to deal with his heart yeah. when martyr, when Stephen was martyred. God is the one, as he told him, it's hard for you to kick against the prince. God was already dealing with his heart. And goading him and trying to get him go to go in the right direction. And it was no no a happenstance, brother and sister, no mere circumstance that Jesus met this woman at the well of Sychar. As we read to you out of the word of God, he must needs go through Samaria. Well, there came a time in your life and in my life when Jesus needed to come by. Amen. Yes. Thank God it was just in time. Amen. Yes, amen. He came by our life. He must needs come by amen. our life. When we look at this, he must needs go through Samaria. It wasn't a physical need or a logistical necessity for the Lord to go through Samaria. It wasn't the only way to get where he was going, brother and sister. He didn't have to go through there to get to Galilee. He could have gone another way. But, brother and sister, it wasn't that, and it wasn't that he had a personal, physical reason to go through there. We know that he needed the rest, and we know that he was thirsty, but no doubt there are other places to rest and other places to get water. Right. Okay? He could have went to one of those. It wasn't that. It wasn't, it wasn't the direction. It wasn't the fact of he needed something to drink, and uh, uh, he needed somewhere to rest. It wasn't about him. The need, brother and sister, the reason that he needed to go through there wasn't for him, wasn't for his physical ease, wasn't that it was a shorter way. The need was for her need in her life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you glad? Amen. You know, God worked things out in our life. It wasn't that we were doing God some favor, brother and sister. Ooh. God worked it out. For our good. Amen. 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 God Amen. worked it out for you and I. Amen. Amen. It really was for her good. It was for her and for her alone, brother and sister, that Jesus came by there. He is the only one that could meet her need. No one else could. Okay. The the as much as as uh, 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 you know, we are used of God or whatever. I can't save anyone. You can't save anyone. We can tell people about Jesus. We can live a life before people where they will still see Jesus in our life. But when it's all said and done, the one that they need, it's not me and it's not you. Though no, God will use us. All right. They need Jesus, brother and yeah. sister. And he is the one that we need to exalt. The one that we need to point people to. This is what we're learning 
about the Holy Ghost. Even the Holy Ghost doesn't point people to the Father, doesn't point people to himself. He points people to Jesus because the Holy Ghost knows he is the Savior. He is the one that people need to come to for yeah. salvation, brother and sister. He is the one that people need, and he makes a relationship with the Father and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit possible once people come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Come to Jesus. Jesus came to meet her need, and we read it to you. He said unto her, if you knew the gift of God. It is a gift that only comes from God. It doesn't come from someone else. It doesn't come from some religious figure. It doesn't come, brother, sister, from uh, a person's own morality. It only comes from Almighty God. He said, if you yes. knew the gift of God, it's only available to you and I and anyone else through Almighty God. Amen. That gift that God wants to give to each and every one. That gift of grace. That gift of mercy. That gift of salvation Amen. through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Only available through the Lord. She, he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, and who it is that says to you, give me to drink. He wasn't just some prophet. He wasn't just some Jew like she assumed. Oh, you were you asking me? I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. We don't have any dealings with one another. He, she was just looking upon him as if he was just some mere Jewish man, but it was more than a man that was talking to her that day. It was the son of Almighty God, the Savior of the world, the promise. Messiah, brother and sister, was talking unto her. It is God himself manifest in human flesh. God the Son, brother and sister, speaking to her. And do we understand, do we realize it's the same one that came by our life? God himself came by and saved you, brother. God himself came by and saved you, sister. Yes, some preacher told you. Yes, somebody lived a life in front of you. But God himself came on the scene. Came into your heart. Came into your life. And by his own blood, washed your sin away and redeemed you unto God. Amen. That's what we need to tell the devil sometimes. Hey, Doc, Jesus himself washed me in his blood. Jesus himself has had mercy on me. If you've got a problem with me, and you've got a problem with me being saved, you better go take it up with Jesus because he is my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is the one that was speaking to her and saying to her, give me to drink. It's not just some man, but it is God the Son. All she would have to do is ask, and he would give her that living water. Now, we're singing about that water that comes out from the throne of God, that river of life that is yeah. there in heaven. Okay? For us to thank God for that. But you know what, brother and sister, there's a living water that you and I don't have to wait to heaven All right. to get right Amen. now. Brother and sister, we can get it. Yes. It comes from Jesus. It is the spirit of the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. That life-giving Holy God. Ghost of Almighty God. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he went, the Bible goes on to tell us, but this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, brother and sister, Jesus has been glorified. He has ascended. The Holy Ghost has been sent. We can come and we can drink of the Spirit of Almighty God. Yes. By that living water. That living water is can be within you and I. This woman, brother and sister, she, she had looked to other things to meet her needs, just like people do. 
Okay? She met, she came there looking for some physical water at this well. She was alone and no one came with her. We go on and we see that Jesus began to ex expound her all that she had done, all about her life. Excuse me, all about her life. He knew all about her. He told her to go get your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, you rightly said, you had five, and the one you with right now ain't your husband. <laughs> yeah. Lady, you've been looking at six different men to try to make you happy. Woo. Yeah. Okay? Now, you can be happy in a marriage and keep yeah. Jesus first. That's right. You can love one another. Right. Okay, but you can't expect a human being, just a mere human being, to meet a need that you have in your soul. There's only oh, one that can do that. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank God. We can all look to him. We can both look to him in a marriage. We can look to him. Brother and sister, together, thank God for that. We can walk together. Brother and sister, this, this woman was looking to different men, and she was still alone, and she was still thirsty, and nobody was helping her. Where was her boyfriend at? Well, you know, I don't, I can't understand the society we live in. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I understand that the Bible teaches us the man is the head of the family. That doesn't mean that the woman is his property. That's right. That's a daughter of God. Yes. Are we here? Yeah. I see men. I go out. I'm in town. You know, I, I open the door for my wife, but she can open the door for herself. She didn't marry me because I was mean to her. Why am I going to change because we're married now? I've been married a long time. Are you with me? All right, sir. Hey, I still open the door for my wife. We go to the grocery store. I don't walk trying to be all cool. My wife's carrying all the bags <laughs> and pushing the cart. I see that in town. I'm like, what is wrong with these women? Why do they put up with that? Uh-oh. Why don't they tell that man, hey, dude, why don't you push this basket? Why don't you carry some of these groceries? Yes. Yes. Oh, help me, Lord. Really? You know, the Bible tells us to give honor unto Weaker vessel. They're the weaker vessel. Yes. Don't browbeat them because they can't do what you can do. To give honor to them. Yeah. Hey, let me carry the groceries. Let me push the cart. Let me throw the trash. Yes. Hey, we're not mad at you. Look. That just bothers me. I don't understand. If, 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 if I was some of these women, I'm like... Okay, you will be like that. Well, see what happens next time you want me to be sweet to you. <laughs> now, we're Christians. We don't act that way. Uh-oh. Okay, but if I was a sinner, I don't know how these women put up with it. I'd be telling that dude, hey, listen. Listen, dude. What happened to the sweetness? You need to get that back in the relationship. That's a two-way street. Okay. Anyway, let's go on. We don't act like that. We don't take re revenge on people. We're Christians. Let's talk about people out there. We've been preaching this. Okay. Anyway, she had all these men that had been in her life, and here she is alone, carrying the water by herself. Yeah. And isn't that an allegory of the society we live in? Yeah. There's a lot of women carrying the water. They're working. They're taking care of the kid. What's the man doing? Having huh? fun. Thank God for men to step up and take responsibility for their families. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, well, it's just they didn't meet the need in her life. They couldn't. She even looked to other things. She looked to her heritage. She looked to her religion. We worship this way. Okay. And Jesus told her, you don't even know what you're worshiping. And she began, brother and sister, he, he began to tell her all about her. This has never ceased to amaze me because we're talking about a needful encounter, how we needed God to come by our life. 
Don't we understand God wasn't blind to what we were and the way we were living and the things we were doing? He knew all about it. He knew all of it. Amen. And he came by anyway. Amen. He knew all about her. And he came anyway. Amen. Yeah. We come to church sometimes. Maybe, maybe we got our thinking wrong and, and uh, we're doing stuff that we shouldn't be doing. And we don't think God already knows about it. God already knows about it. Yeah, he, Amen. he knows the very thoughts and the intents of our heart. Yes. And we walk through the door. God doesn't split the ground open and swallow us up. He doesn't strike us dead with lightning. What does he do? Huh? He reaches out to us with grace yes. and mercy, yes. and he gives us the opportunity, yes. brother and sister, to make things right, Amen. just like he did with this woman, just like he continues to do in all of our lives, brother and sister. Jesus tells her, brother and sister, he, he knew all about her, and he tells her, brother and sister, that, that if she would just ask of him, he would give her this water. He wouldn't withhold it, but he would freely give her what she needed in her life. Amen. He would give her. He told her. She said, I know. When the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things. He didn't, he didn't confuse the issue. He told her, I that am he that is talking to you, I am talking to you. Is he? I am the Messiah. Amen. I am. He is, brother and sister. He is in our life. He is combined. He's been that need. We don't have to look somewhere else. It's right in front of our face. It's what we have need of. We need to partake of it, brother and sister. We need to allow Jesus just to bless our lives, to meet our needs, to absolutely be the one that we look to. Jesus was all that she needed. He was all that she needed. Brother and sister, you know what? He's all that we really have. Amen. And he's all that we need. Amen. All this other stuff, it's here today. It may be gone tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. God forbid, we don't want anybody to get hurt or anything like that. But you know what? We may be laying in a hospital tomorrow on our deathbed. The only thing that matters is that relationship with him. Yes. That's it. We get all wrapped up, brother and sister, in the here and now. And I'm not saying it's not wise to plan and to do things like that. But with all of our getting, we need to make sure first and foremost, we are getting what we need from the Lord. Amen. It's more important than anything else. We need this water, brother and sister, from this well. She began, brother and sister, after he told her who she was. She went into the city. She forgot. We know the story. She forgot all about the water pot. Who cares about that? I can get that later. Yeah. I got to go tell my people yeah. about Jesus. They need to come see a man that told me all that I ever did. Yeah. 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 It was a needful encounter not only for her, brother and sister, but others. We, we know we can go on and we can study in the word of God. We know later on Philip came to this area and he preached and God saved people. The groundwork was laid, brother and sister. Others came and they heard for themselves and they believed not just because what she said, they believed because they heard Jesus for themselves. Later on, Philip, God used him to reach out to people here. People got saved, though they were considered outcasts, though they were considered uh, not of the Jewish people, and they were looked down upon. God didn't forget about them. He met their need. Amen. Yeah. And he'll meet our need, brother and sister. Amen. He'll meet our need. He met this woman's need. He was what? She needed. It was a need, a much needed encounter. Brother and sister, we 
need this encounter. We've already, well, Pastor, I'm saved. I've already encountered Jesus in my life. I've already come to him in faith and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Oh, when's the last time, brother and sister, that we sat down with him? When we put all of the things aside and we begin to commune with him and begin to let him know, Lord, I need something in my life. Yeah. I need something. Brother and sister, we've come to him. Oh, thank God. You know, when we get thirsty, Amen. the well is still there. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about the age too old. We're talking about the presence of Almighty God in our lives. Thank you. Where we can come to that well and we can drink. Where out of our belly can flow rivers of living water. Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reference to the Lord. We need that encounter. And you know, we never stop needing it. We're going to come tonight and we're going to pray. When's the last time from the bottom of our heart we just reached out? And let God begin to move in our soul. Let the Spirit of God begin to flow in our lives. Let him wash away all the confusion and all the doubt, all the fear. Tonight, as she begins to play, begins to sing, we're going to come and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My friend, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, we're going to come and pray. We don't want you to come and pray for all these other problems. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Your prayer should be, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost tonight. We come and pray. God bless you tonight is our prayer.